And uh, this session we're going to cover is titled Enabling Enterprise Transformation Through Automation. Being that automation is an enabler, it's an accelerator, it's, it's not the end goal. The end goal is maybe it's security or moving to the cloud faster or some, some other purpose, right? But automation is the enabler to key business transformation. So my name is Michael Howe. I am a VP of our product marketing. Co-presenting with me today is our CTO and co-founder, Olivia Hoon, uh, Olivier Hoon Van, excuse me, uh, and Mr. John Anderson is a software architect. And so we have uh, some real exciting innovation to share with you. Very quick agenda. I'm going to just provide an overview of Glueware and our platform. So just get kind of your bearings on what space we play in, what we do, what's unique about our solution. Share a couple of customer success stories. And then we're going to get it right into some really exciting use cases around a new approach to configuration management. Uh, looking at how we t approach state assessment. And uh, in the final piece, we're going to look at uh, Glueware's recent integrations with Ansible. So uh, we encourage interactivity. I know you guys are not a shy group here, so you're representing everyone out there watching online and, and watching on the videos. So we welcome your questions and your interaction as we go here. So when Glueware engages with a customer, and our customer base is the very large enterprise, enterprise IT, enterprise network, operations, we begin discovery. And uh, usually they've come to us because they have a need or have a problem. But when you begin to kind of peel the onion of what is their current state of network automation, the visual in mind does kind of come like this, which is the iceberg, right? Which is a little bit at the top and most of it's below the surface. So when you, when you look at the current state of automation, and this is kind of representative, uh, representative of a customer base is that they have some vendor tools they're using for certain tasks. They have, over time, developed some limited scripting. Usually maybe one or two out of 20 in, in a networking team are script savvy. And some more progressive or larger shops have actually tried to build their own manager of managers, something that is going to kind of be the, the piece at the top that's going to call the other pieces. But what, when oftentimes Glueware is brought to the table is that they're hitting that, the, the surface of the water here, the big barrier to take the automation to the next level. And why, why is that, right? And when you really look at automation and you dig deep, there's a tremendous skill gap. Uh, Tom joked about you know, installing Python. You know, when, when you look at the pieces and the building blocks required to really automate, it is a very different skill set than network engineering has. I spent 20 years of my career building my CLI skill set and my vendor CLI and semantics. If I have to change and move to, you know, uh, uh, let's say playbooks or, or YAML or some uh, other language, it is, is a fundamental shift and it's very difficult for a lot of people. So you got that skill gap. The other piece you get into is that, you know, creating a script or initial script is not all that hard, but turning it into something that's production ready, where you're gonna get hit commit on your global network and make a change, um, you know, People have lost jobs over that, and you know, we've, we recently have conversations with customers who share how a homegrown script took down part of the network or degraded a service, and they want to move away from that. So to, to kind of get beyond that, Glueware is positioned where it is a package or a solution that encompasses all those things that you don't have to build. You don't have to build and learn data, the databasing language. You don't have to build your own UI. You don't have to build these concepts because Glueware brings it to the table. The beauty of this, and kind of depicted in this picture, is that it can coexist with some of the vendor tools or even some of the scripts you've brought. So what we're going to kind of you know, learn here with Glueware is that the approach is very complementary to whatever state you're at as uh, Glueware peels the onion and that automation assessment. So our vision and what we're all about is bringing powerful intelligence to uh, enable transformative automation, right? So it's about bringing that layer of intelligence instead of you having to build the intelligence into a script and you have to do that coding and build out all that business logic, Glueware has a platform that already enables it for you. So. Let's take a very quick look at the Glueware platform and again, dive deeper into exactly what areas we play in. So first and foremost, you know, we think about, well, what does Glueware automate? We have decided to focus and specialize in the networking layer. So this is routers, switches, firewalls, WAN optimizers, wireless LAN controllers, those things that make up the, wireless, the, sorry, the network infrastructure. Now, today those things are primarily on-prem, more and more these 
these entities, these networking components are moving into the cloud. So for us, we don't really care if it's physical or virtual. We can manage those, those networking infrastructure. Glueware is multi-vendor. We're at 21 vendor operating systems we, we communicate to today. So what that means is that we have a layer in our software that enables us to read and write natively to that operating system. So the majority of those vendor packages are, are that CLI based. So when you think of even a vendor like Cisco, you have iOS and iOS XE and NXOS and the ASA. You have different iOS or operating systems that you're going to have to interact with. So Glueware has those pre-built already. We also have the ability to rapidly on, onboard any API sets that we need to communicate with. So that's kind of on the, the, the lower layer. So from a domain standpoint, Glueware, as you may know, we started in the WAN. We started automating something very hard in, in SD-WAN and uh, uh, Cisco Virtual Office way back when we were single vendor. We went multi-vendor and we went multi-domain because when you look at deploying network policy and automating networks, you can't ignore the campus and the wireless. You can't ignore the data center and security or the load balancers. And so when you really look at what uh, you know, enterprises are trying to automate their network, you need to kind of look at it multi-domain and cross-domain. You don't want to just add another tool into the pile that has one narrow focus. So multi-vendor, multi-domain. The heart of the Glueware system is the intelligent orchestration and automation engine. And you're going to actually get uh, a glimpse into some, uh, some of the depth of it. Uh, the use cases we chose today are very specific in terms of highlighting the, some of the latest innovation that, are, that is in that engine. But a couple differentiators about it is that, as I was mentioning, with those vendor adapters, Glueware can read and write to the underlying networking components. Whenever we make a networking change, we operate in a declarative mode. So we read current state. We compare it to the desired state, and then we'll make the changes necessary to, to become the desired state. So we will remove commands that shouldn't be there, that are out of policy. We'll add the commands that are, are not there. If a command has, uh, if you have the, an incorrect NTP server, we'll remove it and add the proper one. So essentially, that declarative mode is a true fundamental game changer for a lot of people when they look at automation, and we're going to go deeper on that. The other piece of that is that anytime we make a change, the Gluer engine validates every change. So you have built-in closed loop verification of the change. The platform is very extensible to the point where, uh, it's, although it's built for networking engineers, there's a whole development environment that is available that actually publishes content into the platform. So most of our users are network engineers and network operations. And the customization they can do, kind of at level 100 and 200, is directly within the platform. But let's just say they want you know, something completely new that Glueware doesn't have in it. We have rapid de development to, to, uh, to extend the platform and add that, usually within weeks. I talked to Olivier, and he said, hey, for miracles, he requires 24 hours. So, <laughs> uh, and I, I keep that quote near me. And so when I ask him for something, I said, eh, you said 24 hours. But just to make a point of that, and John's on the team that helps develop the, the adapters for our vendors, we can onboard a vendor in as little as four hours. Uh, really complex vendors could be as much as two weeks. And again, once that vendor adapter is written, it goes through QA process and other things. So generally, we'll quote customers you know, two weeks if they're asking for a net new vendor. But generally, every release that we've had in the last past four years, we're adding several vendors every release. Um, the, when, you, when you look at an automation engine um, and you're a very large enterprise, and we were challenged in one of our uh, case studies is in here, a customer said, hey guys, this is great, but um, I have to make sure you can execute the change within my maintenance window. So in the proof of concept, I want you to show me you can make a basic change across 10,000 devices in under an hour. And you know, when you think about automation, you think of someone's homegrown script or something that executes serially, that might be a challenge to get that executed. What we're able to do with Glue or Engine is it is distributed. It can be distributed. So uh, be, it, be it in the cloud or on-prem, you can distribute additional server, uh, server engines that are handling those provisioning. So you can scale Glueware in a linear fashion and deploy as many provisioning servers as you need to accomplish the number of uh, actions you need in a given period of time. So when, when we went through testing, we were at six provisioning servers, 
And when we went to run the test, we're actually happy to show them we, were, we exceeded 14,000 devices in under an hour for a basic change as just a, a note. So the, the importance of scale and reliability is a, certainly a point that you don't want to overlook as you're looking at the very large enterprise and uh, you know, making changes across very, very large networks. The piece on the top layer, so when you, when you envision, and I came, had a, quite a bit of experience in the, when SD, SDN was coming of age, right? And SD, SDN introduced this concept of a controller, and then there was gonna be an app store on top, and then you'd just go and you'd get apps and everything would plug in. And that, that really maybe never really became reality. It kind of pivoted into SD-WAN and, and other technologies. Well, Glueware's model is actually similar to the original vision of SDN, not, not in the fact that you're, you're separating control plane, data plane, in that you have a controller, which is your management engine, talking to the network, but that controller also needs to have purpose-built apps that solve a customer challenge and a problem. So we call it prepackaged automation, kind of similar to your iPhone. You, you want, you want you know, Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn, you go to the app and, and you do your functions. Glueware has introduced a config drift capability, a config audit capability, config management capability, right? These are individual apps and functions that deliver purpose-built capabilities. And again, one of the big benefits of that is delivering something very fast to get something automated. Our inventory is turnkey, right? You plug it in, you turn it on, Gluer inventories your network. We spoke to a pharmaceutical that spent two resources in nine months just to build inventory. So do you want to go and build it and have to maintain it? Or is there an option for off the shelf like Glueware? And then you're, you're hearing you know, in the um, progression of network automation, you hear NCCM, Network Config Change Management. Those old platforms where literally you put in the exact CLI and they are a hammer. You know, it nails it to the network and you hope those nails landed and you hope the hammer hit, right? There is no pre-check, no validation, no uh, all the extra steps around it. Um, the, the network automation progression had moved to policy-based, where you kind of centrally control policy and distribute that policy on the network. Glueware has that capability. And then the next evolution is this concept of intent-based. Intent-based begins to layer in, give me business-level intent, so let me communicate to the software in a, in a higher level of abstraction, and then interpret that abstraction, implement it on the network, and then verify those changes, right? If you look at the pieces of intent. And with the construct that we've introduced in, into Glueware called workflows, we can develop any business level intent that customers are looking for. It could be provisioning oriented, troubleshooting oriented, some combination. It could be interacting with a ticketing system. So that kind of kind of brings us to the top layer, which is Glueware is a platform that you Bring your own configuration. So Glueware is not predetermining how your network needs to be designed. Uh, we, uh, we were marketing ourselves uh, for a while as Brownfield. And uh, you know, Brownfield means that you have an existing network. And who doesn't have an existing network, right? So it's about how do I take what I have and bring that in and then also bring net new to it. So you can bring in your existing configurations, your policies, if you have policy-based config or even policy-based audit. Because the very important step is before you jump into trying to control all your configurations, you want to audit and see exactly where you're at today. And so we're going to talk about that a bit too. But auditing is company-based policy, but it's also, you know, we're working with pharmaceuticals that have to be FDA compliant or, FDA, uh, or um, financials that have to be PCI DSS compliant. So you have to audit the underlying networking to ensure that that's there. And then... As I mentioned before, the ability to inter interconnect with other systems. Glueware does not sit on an island and is uh, you know, one single piece of software that does everything. We're going to interact via API to ISC ITSMs or IPAMs or your ticketing system. Uh, you know, um, so that's the API integration. So just jumping ahead, I know that was a lot, but that's probably the main slide to talk about the platform. I don't want to go through all these use cases, but just to highlight that, some of the top ones that we're doing right now are uh, helping to enhance security. So we're not a pure play on security, but we automate operating system upgrades. Uh, we uh, can deploy policy for things like your, your TACX and your passwords and things like that. We can automate ACLs. One of, one of the really good use cases we've done is automating network admission control. 
If you've ever had to do that, it's kind of fairly painful, a lot of steps to enable 802.1x and a bunch of commands on a port. So security, um, compliance I touched on. Any large enterprise, most of the ones we deal with have some level of compliance they have to test to. And um, accelerating cloud is a big one. Um, everyone's using cloud in different ways. The main way in which we're accelerating cloud today is in automating the network to enable successful cloud migrations or coexistence. So uh, in the case of a large pharmaceutical, is automating QoS policies, uh, SNMP and NetFlow, so that when they backhaul to their cross connects to the cloud, their apps worked successfully. So uh, again, you can just get a, a sense of the type of things we do. Because it's been two years um, since we, when, since we uh, presented Networking Field Day, and in our, in our kind of rehearsal for this, uh, one of our members said, hey, wouldn't it be nice to just share with the team how much innovation that we've done? So I just want to run through a couple of things that things we've added into the platform since the last time we, we uh, spoke in Networking Field Day. So we have the dynamic inventory, inventory or network, and I mentioned API integration. So we've integrated Cisco APIs to, to, to pull things like the P-certs, your smart net contract status, and your uh, end of life, end of sale. So that assessment or that integrated assessment with a vendor that provided APIs to do that is really empowering because you get that information and then you can make decisions about the next steps. What equipment do I need to upgrade? What equipment do I need to replace? And then it, it follows uh, lockstep. So one of the new things we're excited to deliver is uh, the network discovery. We've had subnet-based sub discovery in terms of onboarding devices into the system. Um, we are, uh, we've progressed that to have it, you seed certain nodes, Glueware examines the ARP table, CDP neighbors, LLDP neighbors, and can then crawl the network and intelligently add nodes to uh, the network. And that, that's very important. We have customers that uh, grow through m and and you know, a lot of times, you know, you engage with a customer like, well, what's the pain point? Well, we just acquired a new company and now we need to take on their network. Well, you know, how, what kind of documentation have they, have they shared? What is the state of the network? What is their inventory? You know, getting a handle on that. So that's exciting. I mentioned config audit. Um, it's a new capability that since our last one. State assessment, we're gonna go into a lot of detail on that. We have a, a totally refreshed OS manager app. Um, we automate operating system upgrades. Again, a very painful process. I saw a gentleman in the room has a, in case of emergency break the glass, and it's an old council cable. And I had bad flashbacks because when you fail an OS upgrade and you brick a device, you got a council in it, you got to go into the boot ROM, you got to recover it, and it's a very, very painful process when you get an OS upgrade wrong. And Glueware does the pre checks, post checks, and ensures that pro. So you don't have to use that council cable. And I don't even have an RS232 port on my laptop anymore. so. That's, uh, so I'm not going to go through all these, but I just want to state that you know, Glueware has done a, a number of innovations, and a lot of this we're going to be showing in our use cases. So I talked about a few customers. I want to just highlight two quick customers, uh, one being MasterCard. Um, and again, we, it's, it's kind of painstaking when you work with enterprise and get them to agree to an endorsement and, and let, them, let us use their logo and let us you know, uh, claim and tout what we were able to achieve. But, this is not too different from a lot of the financials we talk to. You know, mixed vendor network, maybe mostly Cisco, but also F5, Palo Alto Checkpoint, um, built over many years, you know, geographically dispersed. Uh, it's built for stability and reliability. This is a financial network that's handling all your credit card transactions. So when we engaged with them, they had a bunch of pain points. One of the biggest is being they're on the board of the PCI DSS specification. So they have to be beyond compliant. Right. Um, so, what when you when we really got into the assessment, their their current state was um, old vendor tools, um, some old platforms that were you know doing single purpose type functions, and they were augmenting it with a bunch of scripts that you know one or two people could run from their machine, and some were vendor provided. And th these are kind of painful steps. So, you know, compliance and. When you have those things in the way, you can't be agile. And how, how can you be agile and make changes in the network but still maintain stability and reliability? So for them, and again, these, this was the customer who had said 10,000 changes in under an hour. So they had some very high bars for us to meet. And uh, you know, they, again, the maintenance windows and other things like that. So as they looked at it, 
And a lot of companies go through this, this process of saying, what would it take to build it myself? And oftentimes there's advocates within organizations coming from DevOps saying, you can build it or we can help you build it. And what we're finding is the DevOps tools and the DevOps tool chains, although they're extremely effective in compute and in that infrastructure, when you try to apply them to the networking infrastructure, you, you hit all that complexity that you don't find in the, the compute space. You have all the variabilities of the platforms and the port mappings and the, there's just so much to deal with in the underlying because it was built as individual systems, not just clones of PCs. John and I were talking and he, he mentioned DevOps is much easier because every PC is a clone. You can treat them the same. In networking, each device has a role and a function in that individual configuration and, and, pro, and function. So doing it yourself is, is very, very difficult and, and applying DevOps is not always the, the method. The vendor tools they looked at were just not there. Um, they, evaluate, they had some existing ones, they were evaluating new ones, ultimately they were not there. Gluer had prepackaged automation, we, we accelerated their time, uh, we, by enabling them to onboard their existing config was a huge one and the fact that we we're declarative. So um, I'm going to kind of skip through this, but just to get to the results and say, they, uh, they shared this at uh, Onug Spring last, uh, last year, and you know, it's again, they were, on, they were on track with all these metrics with these changes within 24 hours, enhancing security by doing, being able to do monthly patches, 0% um, defect rate, meaning um, you know, when they make a change, uh, is it reliable change, reducing config drift, right? This is that standardization. You want to standardize and then someone makes a change or is troubleshooting and leaves in a command or forgets to put the ACL back on a, an interface. That never happens, right? Um, so so they're, they're really tracking to very successful results. And I just want to highlight one piece of the quote from James Radford, which was, they were able to implement and be fully integrated in 16 weeks that otherwise they, it would have taken years to get to the state glue where it got them to in 16 weeks. So when, you know, if the question is asked, could we automate this, could we do it in-house? Sure, how long will it take? Years, right? What if we accelerate, what, are, what if there's better ways? So another very quick customer story, Merck, I mentioned them a little bit already, the very the big first win with them was this journey to the cloud and having to automate the underlying, had, having to automate nearly 500 routers in the global backbone to implement QoS, NetFlow, SNMP, and to deal with all the variables of the platform. They're not all the same router type, they're not all the, the same port mappings. It's primarily Cisco, again, built over years, ge geographically dispersed, uh, kind of common themes here. And so we were able to move them to, you know, highly automated and, um, it really transforming how they implement changes. And so these metrics were taken right out of that first use case around their move to cloud. 98% reduction in time. This type of change implementing QoS on their global backbone, they typically would have outsourced. A one-time change would have cost 220 grand. Their initial design of QoS they didn't get it quite right. We all know how QoS works. You're, you're assigning QDEPs and you're, you're, uh, you know, things need tuning. So think about this, they, it would have taken six to nine months to get that initial implementation done. Glueware deployed it in under three months and it was fully automated. So they tuned their QoS more than nine times during that first year, just tuning it to make sure the application mix was successful. So uh, again, you know, when you look at what they, what they spent on, on Glueware and then in their first year over $2 million savings was tremendous ROI and that led to Merck going um, enterprise wide with Glueware. Now they're automating security, they're automating things like uh, NAC on, on ports, they're automating OS upgrades and many, many more. So just to conclude here, um, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna wrap and uh, on the intro, I'd like to feel any questions you'd like to share with me and we're gonna switch over to our very first use case here. So with that, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, open to questions. Curious, when was the Merck uh, deployment? You know, yeah, the Merck deployment was um, the beginning of 2018. Yep. <coughs> yeah. So maybe this is something for later segments here, but I'll ask now. So um, I saw on a previous slide uh, model-driven automation. I saw some references to Ansible and things yep. like that. So under the hood, is that primarily what you're using to abstract the network? 
No, I see it. No. Yeah, so that, that is a great question, which is what is the underlying technology? And, and the, the first part of it is absolutely correct, which is we're data model driven. Mm -hmm. Everything we ingest from the networking layer, we actually dynamically create data models. So when we, when we, um, invent, when we onboard a device into our inventory, it becomes a data model. We happen to use JSON-based data modeling. And so there's, there's kind of two components to it, just to do, just to give you a little bit of depth, is that um, we have an annotated JSON which makes up uh, the data model. When data is applied to that model, it becomes just pure JSON, right? And so our engine, our JavaScript engine features and components, JavaScript doing discovery, comparison, all the, the functions you're going to be hearing about that our engine does in terms of processing is done through, through JavaScript in the engine. And, and again, back to, um, and then we have underlying Mongo and MySQL databases. We have a messaging bus. I mean, you know, it is a full blown, you know, software platform and system to enable that. Now, the beauty of that approach is the end user being built for a network engineer, network ops person, they don't have to really know any of that. They can look under the covers and see the data model, but they're dealing with CLI and they're dealing with forms that are rendered from the data model to import, import the data. So we'll, we'll kind of leave it. At yeah, so something I just want to add is uh, our data modeling is, is we created our own, basically, because we looked at, you know, Yang, Tosca, you know, back then, they, they were great, but they were incomplete for what we wanted to achieve. And, and most importantly, um, it's very developer oriented. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to, to have something pretty central in our um, in, in the Glueware engine so that with one data model, you can have you know, built-in data validation, UI generation. I mean, you can, so, you can do all sort of stuff with our data model. Yep. Right? So it's, it's our own.